Hi, so welcome virtually to the studio, to Atelier Molenpad. My name is Daniela Rabinovitz. Uh, I'm an artist and I also have um, lots of workshops for teams, for individuals, intuitive painting, also for kids. And I wanted to make this short video so that you have some insight, uh, more insight into the mysterious world of, you know, art, tools and materials. So the basics are that, um, you know, all materials that you could buy from a store or that you might find in nature and use uh, to create art are made from a pigment and a binder. So a pigment, you can think of uh, minerals that are ground up, you know, those are the colors, so the yellows and the blues. Uh, often a binder is, is in fact a kind of a glue. And so if you choose to use paint, which is what we would do at the studio, we would be using a kind of an acrylic uh, paint. There's uh, different qualities of it. Basically, um, acrylic paint is pigment and then a polymer, or soluble. Um, and then we have uh, finger paint, which you might have at home um, with the kids. Um, and this basically, when it even dries up, you can still uh, get it out. So we need something to use for a palette, but you can just even use um, uh, just some cardboard. Uh, and then at the studio, we would be using these, uh, some just simple brushes, flat hair brushes, and a palette knife for scraping the paint and for carving into the paint. do with some of the uh, just the dry media so we have um, some pastels these are some soft pastels so basically we can draw with them and we can so we can rub and we can combine colors in that way so that's a fun way to already create something then we have these um, crayons are a little bit harder they're still they're still basically uh, you know, powder in compact format. So we can still draw with them and we can also rub them. Um, they leave a little bit more of lines, as you can see, then the pastels are a little bit softer, but they both suit its uh, purpose. They both, um, you know, serve kind of different needs. You can get quite like expressive and drawing with these. Um, and then we've got, um, colored pencils, so just standard colored pencils that you might anyway have at home. And the colored pencils, we can draw many ways. We can, uh, we can make lines like this. We can do cross hatch. We can also just draw and then we can fill in. And then we have these other kind of crayons, which are really made with um, other materials. So we have, they're always with the pigments. And then for instance, this one is, these are oil pastels. So these are really quite juicy when you're drawing with them. Um, again, you can uh, mix. So uh, those are the oil pastels. Again, here, it's just uh, oil pastels. And then these are wax crayons. So, um, okay, and then we've got these uh, water soluble crayons. So, and these basically are soluble in water. So, um, what I like to do is I like to put them in water. And I like to, we can use watercolor paints. And in the watercolor paints, we can just dissolve them like so. And then the fun thing with both the oil and the wax is that we get this sort of wax resist. So the water is not gonna go onto the material. I don't know if you can see what's happening there. So it's kind of this magic way of painting where I can sort of create the foreground first and then I can create the background. <laughs> Okay.
Okay, so we can create lots at home also just with simple uh, markers, highlighters, so whatever we have um, at home. Of course, I've got lots of stuff in the studio, but you know these are just good examples. So, of course, we can just create with the markers. have some um, random things like newspaper hanging around or origami paper that you had at some point and you intended to do something with it um, or there are these uh, packs of just uh, colored paper that you can buy and with those uh, you know papers and the origami papers oh and also magazines you know, there's just color in there and shapes and lines and forms and words. So feel free to help yourself. So you can either use with scissors. I like to uh, really just rip the paper because I like that edge. And uh... Okay, so let's continue with the papers we would use. So in the studio, generally, we would use this sort of paper. So that's 65 by 50 centimeters. I like to work really large so that you really, you know, if you don't have this sort of paper at home, so we can use, um, you know, just printer paper and we can tape in the back with uh, scotch tape or cellophane tape, uh, and then we just turn the paper. So if you have a plank that you could use, just a simple board, a plank, um, and then you can, um, if this is too large, you can also uh, take half, just take half of the paper and work, you know, in this scale. So just see what you can do at home. Okay, so once we have the paper set up, uh, whether it's flat on the table or, you know, sitting up like this, and my preference is to have it really like this because, you know, we're vertical beings and it really does something to us when we can see our work like this right in front of us um, as we're working you might want to um, rotate the paper around uh, like. now another thing is that when you're here in the studio you can uh, draw a little paint a little bit look around and you can see what the other participants are doing so it, to create the same situation at home, what I urge you to do is to think about where are you going to place your, uh, your laptop, your iPad, your phone. The nicest is um, with a laptop because you can just, you know, prop it up uh, so that um, everybody can see what's going on. What I always love with this, especially working at home, is that you have more materials than you realize you have. And I like to um, really combine them together. So, and we speak soon on Zoom um, and then I'll give you the actual uh, assignment that we're all going to be working on. Speak soon. Bye. Bye.